This is a story of a woman's day to day worry. Indian Black Butterfly comes from the fact that um, Indian is my heritage, which I denied for a long time. Black because I'm born on the African continent, and a butterfly because it's the greatest symbol of transformation and freedom. A lot of my work revolves around creating uh, a greater understanding on what values actually mean, and then how to act, to live them, to breathe life into them. Everything I do comes from inherently inside and comes out. And because I've done such a lot of work with people and such a lot of work on myself, uh, that I thought, okay, so let me start paying attention. Let me start paying attention to the fact that every time I have a conversation, then something shifts for the person and things would shift for me as well. So as I started to pay attention, I realized that I need to do more with it. And that's why everything I do is self-created. I don't use anybody else's methodologies. I haven't gone and borrowed techniques. I do my own stuff. I don't refer to X, Y, and Z. I don't refer to books. I don't refer to quotes. So I think we all have our own bag of wisdom. We've got to all learn how to tap into it. And I've been fortunate enough to tap into that. There have been so many challenging moments in my life. And not just moments, periods, years, months, right? Every experience has taught me so much, so much. Because what I learned to do from a very young age was instead of looking at the problem and staying there and staying there, which is part of what humanity does, is looking at it, dealing with it, seeing it, and then after a certain time saying, right, what did I learn from this? When things are tough, I have learned to turn to myself first. And that meant that uh, I had to teach myself to have a really good relationship with myself. I learned to be strong inside because I had to since I was a kid. And I had to learn how to self-analyze. And so I'd do this whole thing internally and it worked, and it would work most times. Um, but that didn't mean that I stopped there. I am open to sharing even the worst experiences which were so challenging and people feel that those are things that you ought to be ashamed of. Whereas for me, they're my greatest moments because they helped create a stronger me. I rarely ask people for advice because I think I have to make my own decisions and take responsibility for my own situations so that whatever consequences come out, I take responsibility for that. I've always been an odd being uh, on, the, on the basis that um, being born in a narrow brown lane, I was told to stick to that narrow brown lane. So I rebelled and I refused and I disagreed and I stepped out of it and I wanted, I was curious, I wanted to know about everybody and their way of life and I, I didn't see colour from the time I was a kid, I never saw colour so for me it was difficult to understand it. I had friends of all colours, shapes, sizes and what have you and uh, I made it quite a ruckus as you can imagine. And then I met my uh, husband-to-be um, and, uh, and he was a whole mix, you know, quarter Kikuyu, quarter Dutch, quarter Nandi, quarter British and like, okay, so I've married a black man. And for me it was like, yes, yeah, so I knew the marriage wasn't working. I knew the marriage hadn't been working for a while. But to actually have to make a decision, to walk away from someone you really love, regardless. And I think there must be a little bit of, you know, warpedness in all of us that we want to keep loving someone when, when it doesn't work. But we're human, all right? And that's not an excuse or a reason. But it takes a while before we realize stuff. So I actually made the decision to walk away while I still loved him. And, and, and most, most, most of the people, because we had friends that came more from his end, you know, kind of blamed me for leaving. Um, I didn't have any support system at that point then. And uh, again, it was like going inwards. 
and figuring out, right, I've made this decision, I have to take the consequences. Consequences means, you know, start from a clean slate again. What keeps me rejuvenated every time I do this work is the fact that I follow a very, very deep and uh, profound practice of meditation called Transcendental Meditation. What it does, the technique, what it does basically is it takes you inwards and it takes off the layers that you accumulate during the day. And you, it's, it's a meditation practice twice a day, morning and evening. And so it takes the layers off and the more you meditate, the more you dive and transcend into yourself where the source of creativity comes from. It all comes from the inside. But I wouldn't be able to dive there and be able to reach that source if I wasn't uh, uh, practicing regularly. The one thing that I, especially when I'm challenged, is uh, everything passes. No matter how bad something feels, it will pass. No matter how good something feels, it will pass. Everything that one experiences is only to teach you to be a better person, to be more of who you are. And so every lesson, every experience, especially the ones that really pull you down, they teach you how to be that much stronger. They teach you more about who you are because within those moments, they, you're dealing with stuff that you were never taught to deal with. I'm Tazim Elkington and I'm a proud Kenyan woman. What we need is a story of a woman's day-to-day -day glory. Oh, it's the story.